Hey everybody, my name is Phil. My name is Phil. All right, and we want to welcome you to Stretched. We're uh, doing kind of a special stretch today. You can see how far apart we're sitting from each other. I know the camera makes it look like look like we're right next to each other, but but we're really in the middle of um, of the the COVID nineteen the coronavirus. Sorry, I just wanted to get a stretch. Pandemic. We never stretched. We don't. Stretch I, I, we. I, I can't. <laughs> things would pop. It would make our microphone sound bad if, if I did it. But we're in the middle of we're we're in the middle of our lockdown, and 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 I know you see Phil and I here, and we have a really small group of people that are here. Um, we are not out there and about doing doing stuff in large groups and things. This really is just the the two of us and our engineer sitting down here together and 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 just sharing a little bit with you. But but there's a lot of things going on. I mean, the world is more different today than it's been in a long. In forever, maybe. It's been changing every single day. There's, uh, you know, I kind of got tired of the updates on my phone. I've silenced my phone now because <laughs> whether it's sports or the news, it's like you're getting an update every ten minutes, yeah, and yeah. it's it's kind of. There's always something yeah, coming, and and much. you know, and so we've done a couple of things earlier about, um, uh, you know, about some of the. Uh, the ramifications. Our sermon Sunday was specifically geared towards helping the you know the community of uh, Kingdom of God to to deal with you know what's going on. How do we work through it? But you know now we're kind of more in the 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 slogging through it. You know we're being told that we have to be socially distant from people, and that just sounds awkward because everything we're always being told is about how important it is for us to engage with people, socialize with people. We have social networks and all those things. And now they're explicitly telling us don't socialize with people. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. How do we survive the pandemic? You know, how do we survive what's going on? So if you're following with us on Facebook, our question of the day for Facebook is, is what is your most outstanding social distancing story so far all right now we're not making light of what's going on we know that there are people out there i mean my wife works with uh, uh with senior adults every single day in fact one of the reasons why i have been so socially distant from people is because her job is actually requiring her to tell her family you know don't go do stuff don't go do you know shopping and these sort of things because because we have to protect her community and so i've been extra specially socially Distance, but at the same time, if we can't talk about what's going on, smile a little bit. What's going on? Yeah, well, so. yeah, I'm glad you invited us into your home so we could shoot this. Yeah, uh, you know, we're popping in and we're going right back out <laughs> the door. Um, so we, we know that your wife's has a very specific job with elderly people, so yeah, yeah. yeah it's important for you to definitely social yeah, distance. Yeah, yeah, so um, I know for me personally in my workspace, I, if you don't know, I'm a by vocational associate pastor to you. That's right. And uh, so I, I still hold a job <laughs> outside of the church. Uh, they have sent half the office home for for my work. Uh, if you don't know, I'm in insurance. Real exciting stuff. That is exciting. Nobody cares. But <laughs> uh, that, that's my other job. They've sent half of the department home. Uh, and so I am still in the office. Right I'm excited. Now. You're essential personnel. That's what I'm excited about. I guess about. I made the cut is what I'm yeah. getting at. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of eerie. The office is kind of empty. Um, they buy us food. Nice. Let us know that they still care about us. So it's, it's yeah. Kim's work said they sent out a, it was actually a Facebook thing that they sent out that said all the employees were going to get a hundred dollar gift card for groceries because they're working so much or something. Well, I'm so. looking forward to getting this thousand dollars stipend from the federal government. Uh, <laughs> so I'm waiting for that to come in in April. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's I'm sure that's coming, Phil. I'm, I I have heard stories. I don't know, but uh, my, so my uh, palms are open. Your palms are open. You're ready to go, communist. So, um, but <laughs> uh oh, we got the engineer going back there. We better be careful. Um, so I was just wondering, you know, Phil, if we were talking our, about our social distancing now. Some of you that follow Center Point 840, if you've done the great things we told you to, you know, every week we tell you like and subscribe down below, find the little bell and click the all notifications. If you have done that the last couple of days, you might have gotten notifications of a few weird videos that my family and I have been posting. Basically, the kids are off school this week and this week with their school, um, no, no learning this week. They, they weren't ready 
um, to go to go online learning, and so Everything it was happened so fast. Yeah, and so basically the kids were at home, and and so we we had them. Do, we did spring cleaning on Monday, like literally ceiling to floor. I mean that's that's part of our social distancing. I mean that closet behind behind you there that is cleaner than that closet has ever been, and um, and did some of that sort of stuff. But then we were like, well you keep hearing these stories of people that are like bored out of their mind. So bored that they might just, you know, sit in their pastor's living room for an hour while everybody else does other things. There might be other people here, but you know, just bored out of their mind and, and going crazy. And, and I'm like, well, well, we could do something about that. So my kids and I, every day we've started, filming a a video fun you know I'm, I'm not dressed up i'm you know just having a good time and and it's called social distancing with center point and and camry thinks that's hilarious and so we've played board games and just had talks she has made some cookies so dip some oreo right, right cookies now. they're they're made they're in the kitchen and she filmed herself making them but she filmed it where we have to put it in the, the why, editor why are they and, not on set camry <laughs> and so um <laughs> So once we edit that film, that's going to be going up tomorrow for for some more social distancing thing. You can see Cambry making cookies. And so that's kind of our social. Oh, look at that. Look at that, Phil. Ma'am, you're going to see a video about the making of those. I Phil's looking at them right now. Why do they have coleslaw on them? Cambry, why do they have coleslaw on them? She is. You don't. You can have one. Oh, that was I didn't I didn't do it. She dyed some coconut things and it looked like coleslaw, so it's coconut. But um, but just some fun stuff. That's that's what we've been doing for our social distancing. You know, something to keep us active, doing something. Cambry actually is, uh, she helps a lot of times with videos we do when when John can't be here. You know, we love John. Same time we hate John because he's leaving us. Um, but um, but so Cambry sometimes when John's not here, she'll she'll help me with some of the recordings I do for other stuff. And so we're learning. It's part of that education stuff. So I'm just wondering, you know, now you've seen. I mean, you didn't show any of those cookies up close. Know, Things are but... getting a little wacky around here. <laughs> I, I think the social distancing has caught into yeah. some of our content as a church. <laughs> George, you know our good friend George. He he made a post that said. Now, in this time where we're transitioning to online stuff with the church, be careful what you allow yourself to transition into. And I looked at cameras like, do you do you think he was watching some of our stuff? And he's specifically saying that pastor at center point has gone over the edge. But I don't know. I don't know. So I'm just sharing that it, it's it's a way that we can stay in because really I'm I'm not supposed to go out and you know go see the seniors and go visit people in the church. I really um, need to protect them and and protect Kim and what she's doing. And so it was just a way. What if we do stuff socially? I, I was mentioning one of the singing people on our worship team, Kelly. She is reading books for for the kids at her school, and so she's starting up a, a blog herself where she's reading books. And I think that's awesome. You know, great ways to do it. And so just kind of wondering. And I know you're 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 working. You're you're, you know, things haven't changed for you. It's 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 going on as normal. But maybe in this whole process, I mean, have you changed the way? Maybe you go do your grocery shopping or things. Have you you got any stories for us, Phil? Well, no, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because like like you said, nothing's really changed for me. But you know, the few times that I've gone to this grocery store, it's crazy. I mean, the the I was late because I'm working. So. Did did you believe them at first when they said people were buying all the toilet paper? You know, I. I did because oh. it's a it's just the world that we live in today um, you know it takes one person on social media to say you know there's a shortage in toilet paper and then all of a sudden you have a run on toilet paper so you know I don't put it past anyone or our society today with the the group think that's out there yeah. um, you know stuff happens quickly and with social media and media um, you know you gotta try to keep up so yeah. Toilet paper gone. I think you can still find toilet paper. I don't think there was a need to panic. Um, they're definitely limiting I, people. They're I, rationing. I, I've been to several stores now. Now we don't need the toilet paper right now, but the several stores Are I you go to, the I am paper? not hoarding toilet paper. We haven't hoarded toilet paper. We didn't go buy a bunch when this all happened and stuff like that. Um, but you know, we, we have a Costco's membership, and just you know, you buy one thing of toilet paper at Costco's, and it's good for a month. And so you know, we, we're just kind of in the middle of that anyways but 
but the stores that the two times I've been in stores, I mean, every single one of them. So my, my funny story, I put it on Facebook. I talked about it before. Every single one of the stores completely out of toilet paper, went down some of the grocery aisles, completely out of all groceries, except like I'm going down the, the, the aisle that has like tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, all that sort of stuff. And they have Rotels. Now, you know, Rotels are kind of the green chilies and stuff. And Rotels makes a mild Rotel and a regular Spices. Rotel. And they make a hot Rotel. <laughs> all of it was gone. On except the hot rotel and it was like completely packed and stacked all the way to the back nobody in connecticut eats hot food and i'm like what about the hot rotels and then i went to the chip aisle and the only thing that were left were the hot chips and then we got some sausage for breakfast and all that was left was the hot sausage and i'm like well i'm glad i like hot stuff because if it says jalapeno or hot or whatever at least the grocery store i go to people are like well i'm not eating that stuff so I had a friend said, did you get like a true text? <laughs> I had a friend said, did you get some toilet paper? I was like, no, because there's no hot and spicy toilet paper. So if they start making hot and spicy toilet paper, I'm golden. I got everything I need. So, well, you know, I think I'm compensated well by my wife because my wife worries about all that stuff. So uh, I'm sure that she's had some stories, but me personally, it, good. All right. I've been living my life. You're I living the dream. Boring. So I, here's. It may be a little more serious of a question. We're going to come okay. back around. I mean, this this may be this may be a hard transition. But I was having this thought this morning, uh, and uh, as, as I was doing some writing and thinking about some of the things I was doing, thinking about dealing with this transition. You know, this 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 you know pandemic. That what's going on? And I was wondering for for you know you're you're in your mid twenties, and for a guy in your mid twenties, what is the biggest tragedy you know that our countries had to face together that you can like do you remember 9-11 i do okay you i do i was young yeah i was definitely young but i do remember 9-11 i do remember watching it live on tv and seeing the tower smoke um so yeah i did live through 9-11 right. i i do remember it even though i was in second grade second grade he was, it was but you know you get much younger than that you you get you know you get you know down to you know 20 my son's 21 i don't i don't know how much he would remember about that i don't know how much that that's something that that's in his mind uh, about things and so then i started thinking well what other major things have we as a society had to to come together through you know to work together you know back back in the 70s there was the oil shortages you know when, when jimmy carter was there um yeah i remember things like the the shuttle disaster when the shuttle the shuttle exploded or or um you know that first gulf war i mean that first gulf war was a really unifying sort of time when you know we we think about you know the old you know george hw bush and and we have kind of this misconception he was he had some of the highest, in fact, I think the highest presidential ratings ever for anybody going into that Gulf War time because because he was out there, you know, fighting an enemy, you know, fighting. And, and as a country, we came together. And then I started thinking this new generation, what what have we gone through together that as a country we've like gotten together and we're like, we're all in this. And does that affect the way that, you, you know, that you might see this event that we're going through? Yeah, I mean... For better or for worse, I think 9-11 was obviously the, the biggest one for my life. We get into multiple, couple wars from that event. Uh, in hindsight, we're trying, still trying to figure right. out where they good Where we things. are and what we're doing. I think they were bad things. We'll ask John about were, that later. Yeah, so, oh. um, <laughs> He's laughing nervously. I, I, think, I think the things that I've lived, we're still living with the effects. I mean, you have the 2008 financial crisis. We're still trying to figure that out. I yeah. mean, the Dow Jones and the S and P are just yeah. in free fall, up and down every day here. I think they halted trading today. Yeah, I mean that's happened time. several. Yeah, 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 that's happened several times. We've we've had those going on. Yep. So I, I think that the big things, the post nine eleven era, are still living out all yeah. those things. The financial crisis, uh, you know, the Great Recession. Yeah, yeah. It just it just got me thinking. I mean, I was thinking about you know, in fact, I think maybe I talked through this with a. Uh, uh, we're, we're doing the church is doing a, a a blog for senior adults. So at my wife's like um, assisted living center, they're on nearly a complete lockdown. Nobody can come into their building except for staff, and so even family is not allowed in anymore in order to protect you know the the people that are in there. And and we were going through the. Um, I'm doing a series through the Sermon on the Mount, and so today we were doing when Jesus says, "You're the salt of the earth, and and you're the light of the world," and really talking about that that generation, those, you know, for 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 her place, people that are in their 70s and 80s, and even some up in their 90s, um, for them to be able to to talk 
to their children and their grandchildren, especially and great grandchildren, about you know how we as a country or how you know we as a family or whoever had to deal with with those things. You know, World War Two. You know the 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 rationing that went on, the the way that that you know the the women that had to go and build the planes and go to work while the men were were out you know overseas, and just the the thousands of people that died. How that just dramatically changed stuff. Their generation has a perspective that that I think some of these younger generations don't. And we try to talk to them about how important it is for them to share that wisdom with that next generation. Oh, yeah. I mean, you think of, I think about my grandmother who recently passed away, and uh, she was part of the... I mean, they call them the greatest generation for a reason. They might have lived through World War II, if not World War One. also, you know, the Great Depression. Um, then you get into, you know, the boomers. Think of how much change our country has seen... Um, so, I mean, especially that older generation, yeah. though, they've seen so much. The rise of technology, yeah, yeah. the multitude of wars, the Cold War era. Yeah. Like, they've seen so much that just hasn't happened in my life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, my parents are not quite boomers. So, my, my parents were born at the beginning of World War II. So, Gen X? So, Gen Xers. No, Xers? No, Gen Xers is me. My That's parents. You? So my, my parents. Are they, like... They I, they would technically be the greatest generation, but okay. they're they're like on the young end of that. Most of the people of my age, like my parents, were a little bit older when they had me, oh, sorry, and I was so on the other end of right, the right, boomers. yeah, okay. yeah. So most of the people my age, their parents are you know, Kim's parents are baby boomers. My parents, right. my parents technically aren't. And you think about what they went through. You know, they they were kids through the end of of World War II. Um, they went through the whole Korean War thing. My dad was in Vietnam. Um, we lived through the Cold War. I mean, th- that's part of my story. I mean, when we lived in Maine, which is one of the reasons why we're back here in Connecticut, I loved living in Maine. But living in Maine, I mean, my dad worked in an office that was behind a bank vault door, you know, because we were afraid every single day that the Ruskies were going to be coming over and, and trying to steal all of our secrets and stuff. It was just, you know, that was the the world we live in and the fall of the Berlin Wall and those things are just so so monumental and now we're living in a time where we've got we've got young people today that have never been through a national or a, a tragedy or a national emergency like this and there are people that are still maybe not respecting what's going on at this time you know it's, uh, it's some people that that are like well you know we're going to do our own thing or whatever yeah I mean I think we're going to look at this you know, it, it takes a, typically a generation to process things historically. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we're going to look at this in hindsight, uh, this pandemic, and just, we, you know, you live it now, and it's crazy. Um, I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a worldwide pandemic, and yeah. I think that that's the thing. It, it caught us off guard how fast this thing really spread, um, and we were trying to play catch-up. Every government was trying to play catch-up. To a certain extent and so i think when we look back on it you know we're gonna look at it and be like wow that was crazy yeah. maybe it wasn't as big deal maybe it was a bigger deal than well, we think it is right now and it's a weird thing right now because we want it to not be a big deal yeah and hopefully by the way that we're reacting it will be less of a deal than it could have been but the reality is we don't have a you know what if machine so we won't know what what if yeah. i find it interesting uh, you know uh, some some of the european countries um england for instance is, is trying a different technique their technique is doing a hundred percent shutdown on their elderly and their and their 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 they're sick and then telling everybody else live your life get the disease pass it around to everybody get over it so that you build a herd herd immunity and then we'll all be fine um and so in a sense they're willing to take some residual losses on not doing it whereas we're taking more of a let's get everybody to lock ourselves and it'll be interesting to see you know which model in the end results in 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 better yeah and i mean obviously i'm less fearful because i'm 26 i generally think i'm healthy um so i i don't think from what i know i'm not a health professional from what I see on the news, uh, I think I would be fine if I got it, but right. Um, but people have died, yeah. and that's the thing. That's the scary part. There have been thousands of deaths worldwide. Yeah. So, so as a Christian, that that, that affects us, it right? Does. So, um, we're we're gonna look at a Bible verse here in just a minute. But in Matthew chapter eight, uh, you know, I was looking at some verses, and and uh, 
And it's frustrating sometimes, you know, even as a pastor or as a Christian, you go read some of these verses about sicknesses and stuff like, you know, the, the passage we preached on Sunday. I mean, these are, are, are 10 lepers, you know, this is a communicable disease that, that you were shunned, ostracized, you were put into quarantine when you had it, and yet Jesus comes and heals all of them. I mean, we, we know he has that ability. We all have stories of somebody we know that as we prayed for them, God was able to heal them. But then, but then why can't we just, you know, snap our fingers, say the word, say the right prayer, and, and all this stuff be taken care of? I mean, I, I have people that, that, that are Christians that, that I've seen them saying, I'm not afraid of this virus because Jesus has healed me, and they're going boldly out into the world. And, you know, I, I don't know necessarily how to... to to process that what are we doing and so i looked at this verse in matthew 8 jesus healed people healed people healed people and then in matthew 8 18 uh, through 20 it says when jesus saw a large crowd around him he gave you, you look at that camera so it doesn't look like we're weird when no, jesus I'm saw a large reading i'm reading the, the verse is over here <laughs> on the screen when jesus saw a large crowd around him he gave the order to go to the other side of the sea and a scribe approached him and said teacher i will follow you wherever you go this is a guy that's seen jesus healing all of these people and he's like that's where i want to be right i mean it's it's coronavirus time and and, and i know of churches that that are like well, we're still meeting you know, I, I, we're still meeting because Jesus, you know, and we're going to, to the sanctuary. And Jesus told him, foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. In, in a sense, and, and later on, he talks about taking up your cross and following him. Jesus is talking about to follow him. There's a lot of it that's going to be difficult for his followers. There's a lot of things about following Jesus that will be that will be tough that that's not just going to be you know all all roses and butterflies and stuff and so how do we as christians you know process that we know that jesus is a healer and we've seen jesus heal before but at the same time thinking about um you know thinking about um that that jesus didn't promise us that everything was going to be fine hunky dory hi kim kim has come in she had to work late today you can walk behind us, Sarah, if you want to say hi to her. We, we won't mind. People will wave at you. So what do you think about that, Phil? Should we expect Jesus to come down and just 100% protect all of our churches from all of these things? And so we ought to be able to just keep doing our thing? Or, or what is our expectation about Jesus as a healer in these things? Well, he can if yeah. he wants to. Um, so there's definitely that, and I think that's the place to start. God can do anything. Jesus can do anything he wants at any time. Yes, he could save you from you know, coronavirus, but, you know, I don't think it's biblical to say that he's, you know, Jesus is our healer, and I think we often get it twisted, um, in my opinion, of, you know, spiritual healing and physical healing. Uh -huh. um, I think those lines are often blurred, very much so, and it's like, well, uh, that ver particular verse is talking about spiritual healing. Yes, there are verses about physical healing, um, but that, like you just said, I think you mentioned it, that's never promised to us. That's never guaranteed that Jesus um, is going to save us in every situation that we're in. You're not indestructible like a superhero walking through every single little thing. Um, you know, if you, if you truly believe and hold that conviction, like you need to meet on Sunday, then, you know, go for it. It's your constitutional right to assemble. It's probably not the wisest thing to do right now. Um, you know, I don't think the Bible says that Jesus has to protect you from coronavirus. Yeah, he has healed you spiritually, and you are saved by grace through faith, but you're still very liable to get coronavirus. Yeah. Um, and there are godly people that died in the Bible. I mean, yeah. godly people that, that uh, you know, I, I think about when they were moving the Ark of the Covenant, and, and one of the, the priests that was a godly man reached up to stop it from falling over, and, and he died. Why? Because God said, don't do that. And, and when Paul says stuff like, anoint somebody's head with oil, we think that is a very spiritual thing. I can go down to the Christian bookstore and they have, you can buy oil mm -hmm. and it's like got scents in it and it's all these and you know, you use it, you know, you can go buy those oils. But, but in Old Testament times, you put oil on somebody's head because that, that was something that they thought was medicinal, mm -hmm. that it was going to kind of cleanse them, protect, you know, you from whatever disease they have. And then it was a medicinal thing. Paul was saying, um, give them medicine 
and lay hands on them and pray for them. You know, and so the, the Bible is not anti-medicine. No. And I, I think, yeah, don't get it twisted. Don't hear something that we're not saying or something that I'm not saying. And it's, it's just, I'm just saying that some of them might hear you know, Joel Osteen saying yeah. something. And, and, and I want you to know that he, he does not speak for, for you or for me right. or for Jesus. All right. So just, but it's the, it's the, it's the mentality though. It's like, okay, we'll go stand out on the highway, go stand out here on not route 91 in Connecticut and see what happens. Is Jesus going to save you in that situation? Mm, probably not. Probably not. Um, but you could believe that with all your heart. Um, so I, I think people often take Bible verses out of context. I think the apostolic era was a different time, um, a different context where the church was uh, growing and spreading. Um, that's probably a whole different conversation. That, but that may be a different <laughs> conversation, but but no, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just think that people take something, you know, broad or a, a specific a specific story from the bible and they apply it broadly yeah. okay um paul uh, got bit by snakes poisonous snakes right so i can get bit by poisonous snakes yeah. well probably not you know god could choose to save you um but you're you're probably gonna die yeah. if you get bit yeah. by a poisonous yeah. snake i'm just gonna say it yeah. <laughs> so um anything can happen i'm not gonna rule anything out but I think it's, you know, I see that argument happening. If you haven't seen yet already, we've actually been criticized on social media for closing our doors on Sunday. Um, we did? I didn't see that. We did. We have been targeted. We, and so... We're going to have to have a talk about this, yeah. right? And so, uh, you know... It's, You're on different social media than I am. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, I think there's obviously a difference of opinion. Um, you know, we took the approach that with the coronavirus, like, hey, this is... Um, a step that we're intentionally taking out of the respect for our local and federal governments. Yeah. Um, you know, we're just going to follow the, the the powers that be right now um, in the form of our human governments, and we're going to be obedient, and, you know, we're going to do it uh, out of an act of loving our neighbor. Yeah. That's really the heart of, I It's think, a part of our stretched said, context, and, yeah, right, yeah. It's and you said, that, I think you mentioned that um, in your opening remarks in your sermon this past week. Yeah. Uh, so... You know, we're, we're going to love our neighbor by, you know, respecting the, the authorities that be right now, uh, no, acknowledging that God is the ultimate authority. Yep. But, you know, we're going to love our neighbor. We're going to love um, people who might be more vulnerable. Yeah, if we don't respect the authorities that are out there, there's biblical passages that tell us to do that. You know, if we don't respect our, our authorities that are here, if they're saying, you know, let's limit, you know, how many people are there. And now, you know, the limiting size is getting smaller and smaller. If we don't do that, we lose credibility with the society. That's that stretch thing. But were we neglecting or forsaking the assembly together of the saints? No. We, we met. We met virtually. But, you know, the when the service was going, I was chatting online with, with several of our members that were watching with me. We had several other members that were watching on Facebook that I know Kim was chatting with. And on top of all of that stuff, Saturday night when we filmed it, we had a person that was coming just to observe and see what was going on, and she got saved. We prayed the prayer of salvation. And if we weren't doing that Saturday night service, I, I, I believe that Satan might have been able to do something to pull her away. But but here we are doing something out of the norm, out of the ordinary, and and God did some amazing things at that moment. I mean, that was, that was sanctuary on that night. God was moving there, and we were celebrating. And so so once again, I'm 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 thrilled. That, that God was able to show his power in something that we ultimately were showing ourselves to be humble and powerless in because we we didn't, I mean, up to the very last minute, we were still like, what do we do? What do we do? And um, and and God, God was moving. Yeah, and I think, you know, this is going to be a great test case for us to look back on, you know, in the next couple <clears throat> decades of how did the church adapt to a pandemic? Yep. You know, something that just, it was crazy. I mean, I, I work in downtown Hartford, Connecticut, and it is, it's empty. It's not a ghost town, but it's it's empty compared to normal business. So I can find parking. You can. Sweet. <laughs> you could definitely find parking. You're right nice. Now. Um, it's hard in Connecticut to find parking. <laughs> and so you know, I think we're gonna look back and see, you know, how did the church adapt? How did the church react? And what were some good approaches and what were some bad approaches? And you know, uh, I'm interested to see in hindsight after things have settled down and after a lot of a lot of time has passed you know what worked and what didn't work 
but I think that you know we saw a lot of churches go online this past weekend, and I think that was the appropriate move. Yeah. I don't think it was a cowardice move. I don't think it was a non-biblical move. Um, I think it was just something that was a, a rational, thought-out decision by yeah. many of our church leaders. And I, we know some of our uh, people, local people, some of our our friends. They they chose to meet. Yeah. So that was their decision. Yeah. And, and, you know, where we live now, I think it's becoming a point where it's not a choice anymore. Yeah. We're being told not to. I mean, restaurants and stuff are closing down. Um, so, you know, kind of to wrap this up, and we were talking about how we deal with some stuff, I just want to encourage you in some things. I heard a guy make a really good suggestion. It's like, um, if if you've ever gone somewhere and patronized something that you like, one of your local stores, you know, we've got some pizza restaurants that we love um, that are around here. Now might be a good time to go and buy some gift certificates for, you know, gift cards for birthdays for for later on, because that's immediate cash in their pocket, something that's their immediate cash in their pocket. And later on, you'll be able to cash that in and use it. You know, if you have some expendable, some some disposable income right now, maybe not the best thing to put in the stock market. Go invest in some local businesses that you want them to know. We want your business to be going strong. And so we're going to buy some gift cards now. And when things get moving again, we're going to come and redeem those gift cards by buying and, 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 and eating at your restaurant or eating at, you know, buying stuff from your, from your store. And it's a, it's a small way right now that we as Christians can come and support some of our local businesses that, that are having to cut hours of people that are there. Um, and, and, you know, not going out and buying a Walmart. Walmart's going to survive. Amazon's going to survive. All those guys. It's it's the people that you, you, you love. Like the pizza that we get just down the street is so much better than what you'll get anywhere else. I don't need to support Domino's. I want to support, you know, West Side Pizza down there. Um, and and doing that sort of thing, uh, you know, it, it's just a good way of being a good neighbor in your community. Helping them out, supporting them. Um you know, no no bailout from the government is going to be able to hit every single notch. But in your town where you are, do what you can do to be a good neighbor in those situations. Yeah, we had a local um, grocery store marketplace stay open this week, and uh, we, we got our essentials from there this week. So, um, And we intentionally did so Yeah. And because they stayed open. All their workers were had gloves on, <laughs> and, yeah. you know, trying to... Uh, maintain their livelihood yeah. as best that they can so we shopped there so yeah. we did that intentionally just yeah. as you said yeah so we love you guys i know that a lot of you are probably watching this because you're staying at home from work or from school or other things so we appreciate you watching please like the channel um subscribe to it go ahead and hit that bell so that you'll get all the notifications that are coming on and we are going to be doing some other things maybe you have some senior adults and so you want to watch one of those senior adult bible studies we're doing and share that with them please share that stuff out share it freely the more you do that the better off it is and we're going to be bringing in just random stuff for you to watch periodically just because we have some times the kids are here they're not doing school yet until next week and so we just want to find a way to to put some familiar faces somebody that you might recognize let you have an opportunity to know a little bit behind the curtain about who i am um cambry says kim's gonna love doing this because that means every single day the living room has to be completely clean so we can film in here. And uh, so there's always always good things going on. So I want you to know me a little more as a pastor, you know, not just the guy sitting behind the, the podium. And any of the rest of you that want to do a part of that, you know, let me know if you filmed a video or you have something, tag it along to us and we'll we'll tag it and we'll share that stuff too. I went and um, uh, subscribed to Kelly's page because she was doing her book reading for stuff. And every time she does that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share that out and let people know, hey, here's Kelly. She's doing a great job. Um, you know, watch a local local person reading a book instead of some you know actor that's on the other side of the world reading a book you know why don't you have somebody from here in Weathersfield, here in rocky hill um reading a book to you sharing something and, and learn a little bit about what's going on so sounds good so we're excited more stuff coming on my son in oklahoma says he wants to socially distance with us tomorrow so he may make an appearance in our social distancing thing so so who knows we look forward to it but we love you guys be safe protect the people that are around you by by practicing safe hygiene by practicing safe social distancing but do 
call um, you know call your neighbors, but especially call your at-risk people around you, your senior adult uh, family and friends, and those that are sick and needy around you, because they are they are probably actively trying to stay away from anything that could hurt them or harm them. And you may be the best person to go and, and buy some groceries for them if you find that roll of toilet paper to bring them a couple rolls when you when you bought that extra big big pack and and leave it on their doorpost for them. Um, you could be a part of that and share it with them in the name of Jesus. Let them know how much you love them and give them a call. All right? Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. God bless you all. We'll see you guys next week.